representation of what we did. What we're left with is cosine theta times sine theta times, well, is less than theta, um, which is less than tangent theta. And uh, let's keep in mind what we originally had. And trust me, we're, we're getting closer to it. So now, how can we uh, move further from this? So let's try dividing everything uh, I want to get rid of this uh, sine theta here let's divide everything by sine of theta so 1 over sine theta okay so what would the next line look like well of course um, let me uh, put a highlighter so this of course is going to cancel out with that but uh, it will remain here and, and let's draw it out so cosine going up cosine theta right and it's just by itself because uh, the, the reciprocal cancelled the original out here and it's less than theta over oh did I just do okay sine of theta now doesn't that sort of look like we, what we got? We're very close, aren't we? And that's going to be tangent theta over sine theta. Alright, so looks like we made quite a bit of progress, right? We're, we're almost getting there. Now, um, what is tangent of theta? Tangent of theta, let me write it here. If we recall tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So we can use our principle of substitution and replace this tangent of theta here with this fraction, sine of theta over cosine. Uh, my tool cosine of theta alright and what happens if we remember our rules of fractions right if we do the same thing on the top and bottom we don't change the fraction so if we multiply 1 over sine of theta and we multiply 1, of, one over sine of theta down in the numerator and the denominator alright basically we uh, have just eliminated our redundant sine of theta sign, so eliminated that, cancelled out with that, eliminated that, cancelled out with that, leaving just one in the numerator, or the denominator, and uh, one in the numerator. So what you end up getting, uh, finally, when you look at this, is one over cosine of theta. Now what's one over cosine of theta, if you recall? That is equal to the secant of theta, right? Hope you remember that from trigonometry. So now we can just uh, plug, or well, not plug, but put that in here. And my teacher would have uh, been insulted that I use such a, uh, I don't know, what he would call a street-like word. We're supposed to use the word substitute, correct? So here, now we can continue, move forward, you know, sine of theta. cosine of theta so the only difference between what we have currently and let, let me uh, highlight it so the only difference between what we have currently and what we have over here is simply that this is uh, inverted so we just have to create the reciprocal right so uh, let, let's move forward in my uh, professional uh, little uh, step here and how this all looks nice and then we get tangent which is sine of cosine and this is where we are right now so now our next step is to make this here theta over sine theta look like sine of theta over theta so we basically have to flip it so if we flip something, and, and keep this in mind, uh, we, uh, 
do a little example. If we have one half is less than, I don't know, um, one, which is less than two, and if we flip everything, right? Let's just flip everything. So the reciprocal of one half is two. The reciprocal of one is one, and the reciprocal of two. Uh, let me not do two. Let me just do three just for presentation purposes. So the reciprocal of three is one third. So you notice that when we take the reciprocal of everything that these signs here, let me highlight them, our less than signs have to switch. They, they have to be also flipped in a sense. So they have to flip, be flipped this way. So if we're going to find the reciprocal of sine of theta, we have to flip everything. So what we end up getting is 1 over cosine of theta is less than sine of theta. And we're finally here over theta. And this would be 1 over secant theta. So 1 over cosine theta is secant theta, right? Secant theta. And uh, let me not do this again. Remember my notation? Just brought this down, right? And 1 over secant theta. 1 over secant theta is the same thing as 1 over over 1 over cosine theta. Uh, my pen is acting oddly. There we go. So this, we can obviously take this and stick it in the numerator. Uh, of course, the long logic of that is uh, we can multiply by both the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, which would be cosine of theta. And uh, basically, that would um, cancel out this. And all we're left with is basically what we have here, cosine theta. So we have cosine theta over on this side. Because 1 over secant theta is cosine theta. So now we know we can actually really apply the squeeze theorem right at this point. We, we've uh, done enough mathematics to now apply it. So, recall that our original is that, uh, well not function of x, I, I don't know why that's there, prove that the limit as theta approaches zero. Limit as theta approaches zero um, of this function sine theta over theta is equal to one. So let's make theta equal to zero. So well find basically what you really have to do is find the limit of all of these. So limit theta that goes to zero of secant theta. And an odd little phenomenon is going to happen right now. So limit of theta <gasps> is as it goes to zero or sine theta over theta less than well greater than and now I'm sorry I got used to it now the limit as theta goes to zero cosine theta so uh, zero is within the domain of cosine theta and zero is within the domain of secant theta so we can just plug it in so the secant of zero is equal to one and the cosine of zero is also equal to one so basically we have one and one so by definition by proof of the squeeze theorem. Oh. The limit as theta approaches zero of the function sine theta 
over theta is obviously between 1 and 1, so this statement is now proven. Well, uh, this statement is now proven. All right, so I hope I've helped you out, and that's all I have to say. And I hope you understood everything I did. Take care.